And now I'm very happy to bring in uh, a friend of mine, a friend to uh, the entire city of Philadelphia, which doesn't necessarily make him your enemy, San Francisco. He's a great sports talk show host. John Kincaid joins us here on the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Let's face it, John, this has been an easy week to enjoy as a sports talk radio host in this city. I'm guessing in your city as well. We really do have the game that this conference deserves coming up this Sunday. I think we do. I want to negotiate right now, though. Is this two cases of Bud Light for this appearance? I mean, what do your guests get? Do they get a, a case? Don't two get cases? Cocky. I mean, this is a big weekend. You get nothing. Should we, should we have a mayor's nothing. bed here? We should have like a... a oh, no. Oh, no. No mayor's beds, please. Uh, you we don't, don't want... Any. We don't need any of that. Like, what would I even want from Philadelphia? What could you send me that I'd think, like, yeah, that'd be, I, I want that. I could send you a a cornerback that could cover. Oh. Maybe that would help. You're saying the Niners don't have those? Yeah, I think that that could be a problem. Might well, be a little bit of a problem. Afternoon, around 4.30 on Sunday, you may be trying to take me up on this offer. Is what I'm figuring. I'll say this. The best cornerback on the field is going to be Darius Slay. I think he's the best defender the Eagles got, actually. He is incredible. And Bradbury is a great cor- is a really, really good corner, too. He'll get paid as a number one next year. He'll be you know, capitalizing on it. He won't be back here. But he came here on the one-year prove-it deal after the Giants had to cut him. And uh, Darius Slay and him have been an amazing, amazing uh, combination and they've done a great great job and they've rarely had a game where they were even slightly subpar let's put it that way what was that game and how subpar do you define subpar for them i would say that there have been a few there have been a few games this year where i've been a little concerned and where i got concerned was the fact is i think that the bears game was one which shocked me because that was a game where you had a running quarterback, and I thought, okay, it's a, it's a guy in Justin Fields who's going to run all over them, and he really did. He caused them some problems. He, uh, he got out there, and I swear it distracted them. It, it like All of a sudden, the Eagles secondary did uncharacteristic things, and there was a lot of over-aggressiveness. I think they undersold Justin Fields, and it's one of the things I said on the show this week is – do not underestimate Brock Purdy because I think the young man has done a fine job and I think he's just young enough and talented enough that he could, you know, really cause them problems if he's in any way underestimated, if they think they've got him all figured out or they think they have a game plan on him. This young man has been an amazing story. And I'll tell you this, Philly's got a lot of respect for him for what they've seen. And I'm shocked because I thought going into the week, it would be a lot of Philly fans mocking Purdy. But I think that it's the, this an educated fan base, and I think it's been really, really a lot of positive press coming his way. John Kincaid out of Philadelphia joining us here on 95.7 The Game. And I asked this question, and I'm not trying to take a shot at all. And I sure. hope I, I, I think you'll know exactly what I mean when I ask it, too. Because, look, Colin Kaepernick appeared, dazzled us for a while, and then went away why he went away is you know that that is to be debated until the cows Correct. come home where there, there were extenuating circumstances as you've watched jalen hurts here develop is this a fully realized nfl quarterback for a decade or is there anything about his game and how hard it is to prepare for what he does that sort of is a cause celeb not a flash in the pan but Jalen Hurts, the kind of guy who comes in, has three or four very hard-to-figure-out years, and then he gets figured out and things change. Or is Jalen Hurts truly, like, six years from now, he's the Eagles' starting quarterback? Well, I think he's going to be – I do think he's got a lot of staying power. What I do have a question about, though, is, like I would with any running quarterback, I'm going to have a problem with a guy who – and really, I mean, like last weekend, he had six designed runs against the Giants – and I think, honestly, they wanted to show designed runs just to pretty much put on when they got out to a lead. I think they wanted Kyle Shanahan and his staff having to prepare for him to be able to be doing his design runs that he usually does. I worry about him holding up because he's been injured in December both years that he's been a starter. He's missed games in the month of December. 
and that would be my concern. I have no concern, though, about him going the way of Kaepernick because even though I have, I still have a ton of respect for Kyle Kaepernick and his, and his talents that he showed, but what I think he also did was, in a way, he got distracted, and I think he did become a celebrity. Uh, Jalen Hurts is a bit of a football nerd, to put it kindly. He is a guy who is completely invested 24-7, robotically out of the Nick Saban mold, where they take, he takes high school kids and he programs them, and he makes them never satisfied, try to get the next thing. I don't think Jalen Hurts enjoys himself enough, honestly. But if victory is how he enjoys himself, who am I to judge it? Is there a team or a game this year that you thought the Philadelphia offensive line was either neutralized in or handled by? No, but I do think there were games where they got distracted. And I'm saying distracted by unforced errors. There were a few games this year where they took a bunch of penalties. And it was a bunch of unforced errors on their home field, which to me was absolutely inexcusable because that just doesn't make sense to me when you're talking about a team playing at home with that kind of advantage that they've got. A lot of unforced errors. I saw some of that this year, and that sort of bothered me. The Green Bay game was a little bit of that. But one of the things that they do is they just Ray, they, they have a way of taking over games for periods of time. And sometimes it's four quarters, and it's very subtle. Sometimes it'll be a series or two where you go, they're not having the greatest day, and Jordan Mailata's shoulder has been a little bit of that at left tackle. You know, he's been playing injured all year. He had that, uh, you know, that shoulder that he's been nursing. And I've seen some games this year where he hasn't been as dominant. But then there'll be a third quarter, a fourth quarter, where if you look at the second half running numbers, rushing numbers, this Eagles team has gotten ahead with the pass, and then they have bled clock in the third and fourth quarter, late in the thirds, into the fourths, by just running the ball down people's throats. Like the first Dallas game, they kept having uh, Jason Kelsey mic'd up, and he was saying, you know what's coming. We're running right at you. Here, it's coming. And Dallas had no answer for him. When they get on a roll, they are as dominant a force as there is in the NFL. And I know that the San Francisco defensive front is going to be a hell of a matchup. It's going to be absolutely awesome. John Kincaid with us here on Damon and Ratto. What is the Nick Sirianni blind spot? And is the team good enough to cover that up? Oh, there is a blind spot. There absolutely is. I've seen games where the young offensive, you know, uh, mastermind, which the, him and Shane Steichen are a great combination, where they've gotten too cute, where they've seen what the opponent's weakness is, and they've ignored it. They went into that Bears game, which shouldn't have been as close as it was, because the Bears had given up a ton of rushing yards to every team all year long. And they came out and they threw the ball, threw the ball, threw the ball in a day when they had 30 and 35 mile an hour wins at Soldier Field. It was an arrogant game plan. It was an ultra aggressive game plan. And it caused some turnovers that were completely unnecessary, which let the Bears stay close. What I don't believe will happen is I don't believe they will take anything for granted going up against the 49ers. So I'm not worried about them coming out with a cute game plan. But I can promise you this sometimes they get pass happy. And. If they find success with it, fine. But sometimes if, let's say, San Francisco, the the Eagles, let's say they decide to defer, and the 49ers go down and put points on the board in the very first drive, I have seen Nick Sirianni and his staff too often get very, very pass-happy and very concerned about getting the score tied quickly instead of sticking to their game plan, trying to find some balance. And make no mistake about it, I truly believe this 100% that they are going to be aggressive down the field early and then hoping that that softens things up for them to be able to run the ball late. When was the last time you think they got too cute? And was it long enough ago that you think the lessons have been learned from that? Uh, I would say the, um, gosh, let me think here. I think the, uh, there, there are times, I'm trying to think of the game. Well, the, the, the Bears game was December 18th. That was the last time that I accused them of that. And by the way, they really enjoy when I do that. Um, but uh, the 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 Titans game and the the Titans game and the Packers game were back to back, 
and one week they ran for 350 plus yards. The next week they threw for 350 plus yards. They are they they get. They get sort of spellbound in it, but both of those games turned out their way, right? So it's it, like it, they both worked. But to me, I said, these are the kind of games, though, where if you get into that mindset that you think you can just do whatever you want to do all the time you do it, when you go up against the more talented teams, that's not going to work out in your favor. A Philadelphia media maestro, John Kincaid, with us here. Let me ask you about our friend Kate Scott. How's she doing Supporting the hometown team, which is now her, you know, she lives in Philadelphia. She calls Sixers game. She's got to play the room she's standing in. I've even seen her tweet throughout the regular season. Go birds. Here come her Kate, 49ers. How's she doing? Kate, we have, uh, we have welcomed her into the fold and from various Super Bowls where I'd met Kate and then some things I knew her before she came to town. So I was so thrilled to have her and to bring her in and we're the home of the Sixers. So we had her on a few times, which is great. Very, she replaced a legend in this town in Mark Zumoff. So she had a very difficult thing to do. And I will be honest with you, a lot of people were extremely resistant to her, anybody taking over for Zoo, and then also the fact that the Sixers chose a female to do it. But what Kate did is ignore that storyline. And I thought it was the best part about her, is she just came in and ignored that part of it and just said, John, I'm going to do the job as well as I can do it. And if someone doesn't want me here because I'm a woman or someone doesn't want me here, they might not like my style, but I'm going to be me. And slowly but surely, she's been winning people over. Less critics. This is a critical city. Believe me, I returned in January of 2021 to my hometown and faced a lot of criticism for things. Why are you doing things differently? Why are you doing this? And they're going to, this is a town that wants to see that you can take the criticism and that you stand your ground and you be yourself. And Kate Scott, I think you guys know it as well as anybody. She's going to be herself. She's, she's from Clovis. Gonna, she's not going to cater. She's not going to cater to someone that has, uh, you know, 280 characters to ridicule her for something. Love having Kate here and thrilled. And by the way, the Sixers, how about Sixers and Warriors? You want to meet up in the spring? I don't know if you guys, I mean, you guys are having so many parades. You must be getting bored. Nah, I mean, we'd be, we'd be look, glad to take one off your hand. Look at it this way: the only parade that anybody's thinking about is the one that might follow the Super Bowl, and the Forty Nine ers. Are you coming out for it? Because <laughs> I'll get you a hotel room and everything. Oh, I will. Oh, uh, there, there, there comes the Philadelphia arrogance. Yes, I love it. I've I love it. it. Here, I've said it here, Damon. You talked about it when you visited on my show. Seventeen six. The Eagles will have seventeen by halftime. And I do believe that they will win this game 27-13. John Kincaid put so it So it's an out under. There. It's an under. There you go. It's, it's an, an under, under uh, 27-13. And I think that uh, – but I think that uh, the San Francisco 49ers are clearly the most difficult team that anyone in the NFC would have to prepare for in a championship game unless they were preparing for the Eagles. This is going to be a great matchup. And, um, of course, nice to be – it'll be nice to see Kyle Shanahan again, of course, from – my years in Atlanta. Um, or, but I would suggest this. If Kyle's coming to town, you know, now he's in town, make sure he doesn't lose the iPad with the game plan on it like he did Super Bowl week. Yeah. Well, where who, the other team, he, he, like, make sure Kyle's got his hands on the game plan and, um, and tell him not to put towels out at the pool. You know, put them out in the morning and then go home and then come back to the pool later to, uh, to go to his towels. He's, he's got a habit of doing that. I'm just letting you in. I'm an insider. He's one of those people. This is all Ladies very good advice. From a, look at it this way. If you can't hear the scars of covering Atlanta Falcons <laughs> offensive coordinator, you're just you're not paying attention because Kincaid was there in Atlanta when He's all of that went down. He's a brilliant. He is the best offensive play caller in the NFL. Hands down. Hands down. No questions asked. Well, then maybe that's enough to carry the day. It should be a phenomenal football game. It really should be. It should be. It should be. I would be much more concerned if Jimmy Garoppolo was the quarterback, though. So i got to be honest. I'd be much more concerned. It's funny. I don't know if Shanahan would be, and I don't think there's a single fan that would be. I, 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 I would agree. But I think that what you will say on, sa on Sunday night, everyone will say we finally saw the seventh-round pick in his rookie year swimming underwater a little bit. And I think that's what we're going to see on Sunday night.
I don't want to hear a word about a cheesesteak. Give me the restaurant. No, none of that. Give me, give me the restaurant that if anyone is listening, they're going to be in Philadelphia oh, this yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. What do they need to book? Uh, okay, I would tell you if they want the authentic South Philly Italian experience, you would go to Ralph's. Ralph's is the oldest family-owned, continuously family-owned restaurant in America, and they actually have the historical marker to prove it right out front. Get a reservation at Ralph's. All San Francisco visitors should go to the Reading Terminal Market, though, in the morning. Go have breakfast and your coffee there. If you want the Cuban coffee, you can get it. If you want to, uh, you know, taste the German coffees and things like that, they've got all kinds of great little shops and stores. Sort of remind you of the marketplace in Seattle. Reading Terminal Market, right downtown, Ralph. But they should be calling now and getting reservations. So, because it's going to fill up and it's going to be very difficult to get in. But they should absolutely do that. And maybe Sunday night they can do it for a post post game because Italian food, great Italian food like that, is great to like sort of when you're when you're a little down and you're not feeling your best. No. It can sort of lift your spirits. You almost landed the plane like a total pro, but no, he had to work like a oh, shot man. in there. Uh, that's why we love you. John, thank you so much, man. You're one love of my too, favorites. Man. Appreciate Take you. Care. You guys have a great time. See you. There he is. I woke up at 6 in the morning to go on his show.